lights go out. Hey everyone, it is Tanya. Welcome back to the channel or welcome if you are new here. Today I'm back with another speed build and this is gonna be a family home. It's a little bit on the smaller side, but I feel like it's a bit deceiving from the outside as there's actually enough space for, I believe six Sims in this house. It's a five bedroom house and it has three bathrooms as well. So it's fairly spacious. There's also a garage that just has some skill building items in it and not too much of a yard space as this is a fairly small lot in the world of San Sequoia. You can see the name of the lot in the upper left hand corner of the screen. This is 23 Eucal Eucalyptus Lane and that info is also always in the description down below as is all of the information you would need if you'd like to download this build which is available on the Sims 4 gallery. You can find it under my EA ID which is Griffey, G-R-Y-P-H-I or under the hashtag Griffey. And you can find all of that info plus more in the description below. I always have a lot of information down there like my reshade and my uh, creator code if you are interested in using that uh, there actually is a giant sale going on for the ea app right now there's up to 85 percent off of various games and packs and so i just wanted to let you all know about that and if you decide to grab something for a discount if you use my creator code which is griffy g-r-y-p-h-i at checkout, I will receive a small commission for your purchase. It doesn't cost anything extra to you. It's just a way to support me as a creator. So thank you. If you decide to do that, let me know if you got anything cool with this sale. And because I mentioned this, I have to say that this portion of the video was sponsored by EA. So thank you to them for the creator code. Anyway, the outside of this house, the shape of it is starting to come together now. I just wanted it to look cute with a bunch of different roof pitches in the front here and like a pretty spacious front porch. And I did play around with the windows quite a bit uh, to figure out which ones I wanted to use. And I also use these gorgeous columns that are from Get Famous. They're definitely more of a craftsman inspired column. I love how they taper from the top to the bottom. I think they are so pretty. And so I was excited to use those here. And honestly, I think that this house fits really nicely on this lot. Well, I did build this in San Sequoia. The style of this world is definitely more craftsman inspired, but I didn't specifically use items from that pack to achieve this style. Like I said, the columns are from Get Famous. The windows I'm using are actually from the Discover University pack. And I still feel like I was able to achieve that style, which was really fun uh, to be able to have a house that looks a little bit different than the ones I typically build here <laughs> since... I tend to want to use the items that came with the pack of Growing Together, which are so pretty as well. It's definitely one of my favorite expansion packs. I really enjoy that one, but um, I just really love these columns from Get Famous. So whenever I find a reason to use them, I am totally on board. Uh, but anyway, now I am starting to paint the exterior of the home and figuring out little decorations like awnings over windows and flower boxes and all of that sort of stuff. And I changed the swatch of this a bunch of times. I was thinking about this dark brown swatch. I tried a green, a blue, this cream color. And then in the end, I end up getting a nice brick on the outside as well as a green. And I think it looks really, really nice in the end. Uh, I tend to really enjoy green on the exterior of homes because my childhood home was green. It wasn't a light green like I use here, though. It's more like that base game green that's like a, a mid-tone green. Uh, but it is a color I do tend to navigate towards or gravitate towards. That's the word I was looking for uh, when it comes to <laughs> building homes. Uh, but here you can see me exploring more with the uh, various siding options, picking out our front door. I also got some really pretty shutters on the outside of this house. Uh, those shutters are from the Horse Ranch expansion pack. I think they are the only shutters we have in the game right now that are not attached to a window. That is definitely something I would like to see more of in the game in the future. Hopefully down the line, they add some more shutters as well as some more throw pillows, just like a couple of things that we've gotten one of and I feel like a lot of us would like to see more of. Feeling a little bit rambly today, just talking about a bunch of different things. Uh, I think it might be partially because this is a longer video. This is a 23 and a half minute speed build not including the screenshots and all of that. So I'm just like, what do I talk about for all of this time? I feel like no matter how long you do voiceovers like this, uh, they don't really get like dramatically easier. They do get easier, like you're able to do it, but it's still sometimes difficult to come up with everything you want to talk about because uh, you're just placing down 
landscaping and cars. Although I do really like this landscaping, I think it ends up being super cute, just kind of wrapped around one corner of the build. I really like the red flowers. I think they pop quite nicely. Uh, I decided to just go for white flowers in the flower boxes on the window, so I thought red was a little bit too busy. And then, of course, getting some low-lying bushes underneath to try to finish off this area. And I also got some of these low-lying, like, uh, white flowers. And some of these yellow ones I considered grabbing, but I thought that they just made the area a little bit too bright. And I don't know. I feel like if you add too much variety to flowers and there's too many colors in The Sims, it looks bad or at least when I do what it does, if you are able to do it, I would love to see that. I've definitely seen some on Twitter that looks so nice and I just don't know how to make it work. <laughs> so uh, I tend to stick to like one or two colors when it comes to my landscaping and lots of green, not too many flowers in general. So that's how I go about it. But anyway, we are working on the floor plan now. Uh, you can see where I have the garage in the front of the build. It doesn't have a lot of space in it because you know, we don't have functional cars. So I just wanted it to be a room <laughs> that you could do some skill building in or have some storage in. So that's what I decided to do. And then I'm trying to figure out the floor plan upstairs because it's a little bit of a weird shape. And I wanted to make sure to include as many bedrooms as possible because I liked the idea of having a fairly small house with a lot of space. And I, I don't know, I think the rooms are more realistic sizes to me because in my experience, I haven't been to many houses where the rooms are giant. I feel like this is a more realistic sized home, even though it does have quite a few bedrooms. Uh, let me know if you agree with that and you think this seems a little bit more realistic on the cozy side, because uh, that's what I was definitely going for. And then here I am trying to put out where the kitchen is going to be. And I actually do end up drawing some walls here to separate off the dining space from the kitchen so that they are in separate rooms. And I used a lot of these archways throughout the build that are from Growing Together. I think they are so pretty. At one point, I have too many of them and I scale it back. Uh, but I do think that they are such a nice like statement piece. And I was really excited to add those. I also really liked how this kitchen came out because it has like a little island piece that's, I guess it's kind of like a peninsula. It's not connected to the rest of the counters, but it comes off in a different way than I typically do for my kitchens. And I just thought it looked nice. And then we have our primary bathroom over here, which has a Jack and Jill bathroom or a primary bedroom with the Jack and Jill bathroom. And then there's an additional like full bathroom on the bottom floor. There's one upstairs and there are four additional bedrooms upstairs as well. Uh, and yeah, I'm just adding <laughs> the same wallpaper and windows into that garage. And then we're moving on into the kitchen to start figuring out what windows I want to have in here and where everything is going to be placed. So just grabbing this sink. This whole kitchen set is actually from Parenthood. It's one of my favorite ones in the game. And for a while, I do stick with this color scheme. And then all of a sudden, I change it. And all of the flooring in this entire house is going to change to be more of an orangey tone, which is very bright and fun. Uh, but I was trying so hard to make all of these colors work. But something about it just felt very washed out. And so I didn't want that. I wanted it to be fun and inviting and happy. So I had to change something and you'll see that here shortly, but first I am just playing around with this, trying to figure out the layout, getting our cutting boards because of course I had to add those. I believe I also get a parenting board here in this kitchen and a couple of plants and you know, all the basic things that I tend to add in my builds. Actually, I think I should be grabbing some books here shortly and I have gotten some comments recently from some of you that think it's weird to have books in a kitchen and I always imagine they're just like cookbooks. I know we have an item in the game that actually looks like cookbooks, but I know a lot of people keep them in their kitchen kind of stacked next to each other. So that's why I tend to add them. They're a nice decoration piece that I feel like look good in any room. But when they're in a kitchen, I am imagining that they are cookbooks. Uh, but here I am just adding some more of that clutter. We have some utensils as well as a drying rack next to the sink. And I'm just trying to more precisely place everything. I also got the spin mixer. Spin mixer? That's not what it's called. What do you call that? Um, <laughs> the, the mixer in the, in the corner. I think that looks so nice. I am so happy that we got more small appliances with the Home Chef Hustle stuff pack. I'm still really excited about those. Uh, here are those books I had mentioned, just getting some mugs next to them. And I also am considering putting this little shelf over the island. I do get rid of that in a little while and decide to put some pendant lights there instead. And then I am grabbing a little shelf to put in this corner. This one is from Cats and Dogs, and I really like corner shelves like this. I really wish we had more of them in the game, but I thought that this one looked quite nice. 
And then just getting a little rug to stand on while you are doing dishes. That's something I do in a lot of my builds as well. As it's pretty realistic to me in real life. I always have had some sort of like, usually it's more of a memory foam type of rug in front of my kitchen sink. But they come in all sorts of styles now to look a little bit nicer. And I like to include the Edmunds in houses as well. It helps to break up the flooring, but also... I think it's a quite realistic touch. I know not everyone has them, but that's something I've always had. And then I was also able to fit a washer and dryer in this kitchen over in this corner. Uh, and so I just put the wash basket next to it and a little sign. And we are still on our original color scheme here. I haven't figured it out yet. I basically start figuring it out once I start working on the dining room and not being happy with the colors. Uh, so it should be here shortly because I'm going to be placing down a table and chairs in the kitchen and then moving on into the dining room and then everything is going to change. It's all going to change swatches, but I think it's for the better. I I'm really happy with how this did end up coming out and it's kind of fun to show the process of how it took me a really long time to come to the color scheme and there's nothing really wrong with this one. It just felt very washed out to me, but some people like this really bright white look with uh, the light tiles and stuff. And it'd be easy to switch it back to this if you decided you'd prefer this color scheme. But I was really happy with it when I do change it to. Uh, here are those pendants I had mentioned. These ones are from the Bowling Stuff Pack. I think they are so pretty. I tried it with this pink swatch for a while and I do really like it. But I do end up actually changing them back to white once I change the color of the kitchen. And I'm playing around with some different chairs here and a different table. And then we are finally moving on to the dining room where I start to feel like there's something that's not quite right about this space. I don't know what it is, uh, but we're going to figure it out. So just grabbing our rug to kind of um, anchor this space. And then I put down a table and I was like, this doesn't, this isn't feeling right. Let me try a few different chairs. Do these work? I don't know. Let me get a different light. Going back and forth and looking at everything. And this is where I start changing the colors to everything. And I feel like it instantly comes to life and... I was just so happy with that decision. So yeah, just switching all of the colors here. I actually get rid of the table and I change it to a completely different one. And I feel like the space just immediately looks so much more inviting. Uh, you can let me know if you agree, <laughs> but I really like this orange toned wood. I know it's a very divisive color, but it is one that I really enjoy in The Sims. So I was happy to use that here. And uh, yeah, I think the dining room ends up being really cute. I got this really pretty uh, books books table. That's not what it's called. It's a, it's called a bookcase. A bookcase from the modern Lux kit. I really do like that one. It's funny how when you're doing voiceovers, just words disappear and you're like, what is that called? I did it in the kitchen and I did it just now. <laughs> but um, yeah, just got like some homework from one of the kids, a nice plant, some salt and pepper, and this little end table to put some more decor on. Some more books. I put them in every room because they look really nice. They're a nice clutter piece. And I really enjoy adding that painted plate to uh, houses that I build that have kids because I love the idea of like kids doing some finger painting on some ceramics. I thought it was really cute. And I actually ended up using the same side table here in the living room that I used in the dining space. It's just one of my favorites <laughs> and it worked so well as a unit to put under the TV. And I'm actually going to be rotating this mirror using tool to make it a horizontal mirror above the fireplace. I think it looks quite nice there. And uh, yeah. Just playing around with that now and uh, I was quite happy with it. I really wish we could more easily rotate items in the game without having to have a mod, but it is really nice to have the tool mod. And speaking of which, I get questions about it all the time. I do have a link in the description below to where you can download the tool mod if you would like to use it for yourself. There's definitely a learning curve with it. I feel like I still don't know what I'm doing half the time. I just like to experiment with it. So if you'd like to do so as well, uh, you can download that down below. That's also where you can find my reshade if you are interested. Uh, just lots of information down there. Really seem to be plugging the description today, Tanya. <laughs> anyway, uh, the living room is coming together. Just getting some more decor under the TV. I actually used a couch in here that I don't remember the last time I used. It is from Eco Lifestyle and it's just not a couch I go towards for some reason. I think it's on the cheaper side too. So uh, if you do any budget challenges or if you're working with rags to riches, I think this is a relatively affordable couch in the game. It's just not one of my favorites. So I feel like I don't use it very often. Uh, but anyway, I am creating a half wall here to sort of separate the entryway from the living room and decorating the space with a coat rack and I believe another little side table over here as well. 
I just think it's nice to have a place to throw stuff when you first walk in the door. Uh, so I tried to do that in most of my builds. Uh, got another little plant here. I just have plants absolutely everywhere in the game. Uh, so doing that, getting a place for your shoes and a couple of other little decor pieces. I also ended up putting this lamp in so many different places in this house. It ends up being on top of this piano as well, which is also in the entryway. I just thought this was a nice spot for a piano. And whenever I get the chance to add one, I try to because it's just such a nice item that I spent years asking for in game, like a regular upright piano, because before we got that one, we had a grand piano and then we had the keyboard that came with City Living. So having a regular standing piano is such a nice addition to the game. And then over here, like right around the corner from that, I did add a desk setup so that your Sims have a computer. I don't think I added a desk setup or like a computer setup in any of the kids' rooms, but I might have. I tend to get them a little confused after I uh, decorate a house, so uh, we shall see. But I like to include a space that anyone in the household could use so it doesn't feel like Sims are going into each other's rooms to use their computers because that's how Sims are, kind of like how they'll do their dishes in the kitchen sink. They will also go and, you know, walk into anyone's room to use a computer or into anyone's house. That's like the thing when you have Sims having friends over, everyone is just on your computer and you're like, excuse me, if I had company over and somebody just sat down at my PC and started doing their own thing, I'd, I'd be like, leave? <laughs> Goodbye? Uh, which is what happens if you do it at somebody else's house. But Sims just automatically do that. And it's it's a little frustrating. So anyway, uh, this is the primary bedroom. I think it came out really, really cute. I used a bed from the Growing Together pack. I'm not sure if I've used this swatch of the bed yet, but I was looking through which ones had the same like sort of wood tone as the rest of the house. And I found this one that has this beautiful like blue and green bedspread and I thought it was perfect. And then this is their ensuite bathroom. It's pretty simple. I'm using the same tiles that I used in the kitchen and like the same sink and all of that. And uh, like I said, this is sort of like a Jack and it's not quite a Jack and Jill because it's not between two bedrooms, but it has a door to the hallway as well as a door to the bedroom. So there are two different entrances to this space. I think that's pretty realistic. A lot of houses have that. I know my grandma's current condo has that. So something I have seen quite a bit. Uh, and then I'm just getting a couple of decor pieces in here. I think that's the only bathroom I show on camera if I'm remembering because I tend to think they're all a little bit repetitive. Uh, bathrooms are not my favorite space to decorate, so I tend to just show you one, because while they might be different shapes and sizes, they generally have the same stuff in them. Uh, but you'll see those in the screenshots at the end of the video anyway. I do take screenshots of all of the bathrooms, but this is our first kid's bedroom. This is for a teenager, and it was very much inspired by this bed from Horse Ranch. I loved the greens and the yellows. I don't know if that's a color scheme I've used in the game yet, but I thought it was so pretty and just like very peaceful looking, even though they're quite bright colors. So got a bunch of artwork up on the wall. I also am making sure to get all sorts of clutter for this dresser. So there's some makeup and jewelry and that really cute mirror that is like a tabletop mirror. I believe that is from the Everyday Clutter Kit. And I don't use it that often because I like to be able to like free place clutter and that has to be snapped to a specific slot as I was placing things around it. But I think it's a cute addition. I love all of the little clips on it. It just feels very like young, like teenager or younger kid with those clips. Although you could be any age and use them. I have so much of that kind of stuff. I have been going through like a scrunchie phase recently where I can't stop buying scrunchies. I have so many and I'm not spending that much on them because if you are not going to the Dollar Tree for your hair accessories, you are missing out. Uh, they have so many good scrunchies and clips and all of that stuff for $1.25. So highly suggest it if you are into that kind of stuff. Um, but anyway, over here, I do get a TV. Oh, I did get a computer in this bedroom. All right. So uh, the Sims are going to be trying to steal this from this teenager unless you lock the door which is what I would advise you to do. Otherwise, Sims are going to be constantly coming in here to use this laptop, which is quite frustrating. Uh, but I am getting some more decor over here. I actually used the cork board from the uh, uh, pastel pop kit. I think that one's really pretty. And it's only the second one we have in the game. The only other 
cork board we have is or like the, the only one you can hang postcards on is from base game so it was kind of odd that it took so many years to get another one in the game and i am curious if we would get another one in the future that would be really cool anyway this is our next kids room it's dinosaur themed obviously matching rug and bed a bunch of toys a height chart i think it's really cute it's pretty simple but i really like how that one came out and then we're moving on to our next room, which is also for a kid. So we have a teen, two kids, and a, uh, I believe the last one is for an infant. So this one is very like purple themed and there's some wildlife in here. We have the little fox and the Sasquatch, some arts and crafts, and definitely some lighter wood tones in here as well. I really like this bed from Parenthood. It was inspired by that. And then I realized that the wardrobe from the kids room stuff pack that has all of the little photos on it was also the same wood tone. So I, of course, had to use that. It just matched so nicely in here. And a little mirror with stickers on it. I love things like that in kids rooms. I know my bedroom mirror growing up, I had a couple of stickers on and I regretted it after I put them on there because then you couldn't get rid of them. Uh, but I also, I feel like that kind of started my problem with not being able to put stickers on anything. I just have piles of stickers that I've had for well over a decade that I refuse to stick anywhere because I'm like, but what if I want to move it? And then I don't stick them anyway. I don't stick them anywhere. But anyway, this is the final bedroom. This is for an infant. I started with like blue and orange, but it turns into a pink nursery in the end because I wasn't liking the swatches. Uh, and I really wanted to use this bed in particular because I almost never use this crib. I use the other two cribs that we have. So I thought it would be nice to change it up and use this one. And I was quite happy with that. But moving downstairs into the garage space, I just got some like counters and cabinets over here to fill in the area. And I think our like indoor or our outdoor trash can ends up in here. I also got bikes for the kids. So there ends up being three in here because, you know, one of the kids is not old enough. They're an infant, so they don't have a bike yet. And then I just also have some like cracks and tears and things around because it's the garage. Maybe not everything is perfectly fixed. And I grabbed this like... I almost wanted to call it dice, a marble circle to put on the floor there because I almost never use that. I always forget it exists. I also got a card table for your Sims to play some cards out here. There is this little collecting station for elements and a bookcase. And then, of course, the decoration box if you want to decorate for the various holidays in the game and our outdoor trash can. And that should be it for the interior of this build other than a couple of boxes over here on the counters. And then we will be heading outside to finish up the landscaping and, you know, put all the finishing touches on this build. So here are those boxes. These are from the Basement Treasures kit. I really like that kit. It's very useful in garages, attics, basements, just stuff like that. And I use it quite a lot. It would definitely be one of my top kits. Uh, and then I just got a couple of these little trellis pieces out on the front porch because it felt like that wall was a little bit empty and I almost forgot to add some steps out the back so you can actually leave from the back door. <laughs> it was just like a, a plat. There was no platform there. You would just step off and fall. Not that your Sims would, but I just wanted it to look like it was finished. But here is that little bit of last minute landscaping and then we're going to be heading on into screenshots. Thank you so very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this. If you did, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more and click that bell to be notified when I upload. Thank you so much for watching and enjoy the screenshots. Bye everyone. Lights go out. You're in my mind. I close my eyes. So it's just